What's up, everyone? My name is Candace Smith, and this is Casco Connect Magazine here, teaming up with two dynamic people in the Pasco community. Uh, to my right, maybe y'all left, <laughs> Marlo Jones, the president <laughs> of Pasco Young Revolutionaries. And then my left, maybe y'all right, I don't know, <laughs> president of CATC, Citizens Against discrimination and social injustice thank you so much for being here thank you so, candace for having me yes so uh we are 14 days into 2021 and there's a lot that's been going on um as you all know the capital was stormed <laughs> the president has been impeached <laughs> What else has happened in 14 days in 2021? Nancy Pelosi asked the Joint Chiefs of Staff to change the uh, nuclear codes because we are so worried that this man is so deranged and out of it that he could possibly start World War III with just anybody. Um, right. I mean, he, it's to the point where he might give his supporters the nuclear codes. That's how dangerous um, and unhinged he is. Yeah. It's been one hell of a year let me just say that but 2021 is starting off in a, in a great way we're, we're okay. impeached for the second time in history the only president let's just give a round of applause for that silently yeah i'm excited that he's been impeached and i feel like they needed to change whatever codes change whatever locks whatever they need to do because he's amending, you know, different things. Just recently, he amended an executive order, you know, double downing on the ban in China, you know, with the trading. He's using his power in whatever way that he can, you know, in the last little bit of time that he has. So I definitely feel like she was right to do that. <laughs> she, she was absolutely right. And even moreover, he needs to be convicted by the Senate, without a doubt. And the Senate should convict him, and the Senate should vote so that he can never hold another federal office. Because I fear, I fear this man in 2024, he will come back. It's just like a bad cold. Mm -hmm. It'll come back. Right. So we, need, we need to eliminate ourselves. And wherever he goes, Mar-a-Lago, if that's where he's going to hang out, let him go where we need, we need him to go. But we all knew this was going to happen. So many people said, watch Donald Trump. Yep. And Congress allowed it to happen. They gave him a car blunt. They allowed it to happen. You're right. You're right, Bill. And then you had his 40% of Republicans behind him, behind him 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay. You know, more more than that, that he should not hold office again. He should definitely be convicted of whatever crimes that he's committed. And honestly, as he's been wanting to keep so many people out of America and do all of these different things with immigrants, I would go so far as to say he should lose his citizenship because you committed crimes and, you know, encouraged people to commit crimes against America, against our constitution, against what everything that we stand for. The, the, cap, the U.S. Capitol is not just a building, it's a symbol. And it represents and seeing it stormed and knowing that our president of the United States was behind that the plotting and the planning and the manipulation, you really should not even be allowed to be on this soil anymore as an American citizen because you went against everything that America stands for. And everything. you took advantage yeah. of the, the position and the power that you had. I tell you, I, don't, I wouldn't go so far as to say you should lose his citizenship. Mm -hmm. When you your citizenship you're, you're born with, and that's something that cannot be taken away from you under any circumstance. You can be he shot for treason before your citizenship is taken away. But he should be convicted. 
Yes. You know, I saw today uh, on some of the video they showed of the riot, and you hear these people saying, we was invited here by our president. We was invited here by Donald Trump. Yes. So that shows yes. the complicity of Trump. And in his complicity, he should receive the maximum of 20 years. Right. So 20 years incarceration would take him off, take him off uh, of the public light. Yeah. And, 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 but I think the people he has that are supporting him, that 40% of Republicans, they would support him no matter what, regardless of what he does. Like he said, if I, if I shot someone on Fifth Avenue, he'll get away with it. And I think he will. And he's, he's getting away with this riot situation as far as his base is concerned, because he cannot do, he cannot do any wrong whatsoever with them. Mm -hmm. So to put him in prison for 20 years and to take his monies from him, I think he has 250 or 300, $350 million left that the people gave him, right. the people gave him. And that's still not enough to take care of his expenses and his debts out here. So I'm thinking he's gonna lose Trump Towers. He's gonna lose a number of golf, golf courses. Yeah. And yeah. if he don't do anything crazy within the next six days, I think the man may go just totally off the edge. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Bill. Just to follow up, we do know that he has lost a number of uh, the PGA tours pulled out of Trump golf courses he's losing uh he's losing he's losing every day he's not look it's not looking good for him and uh just to touch back on uh what candace was saying a little bit about his citizenship and all that honestly from what i hear he's going to probably try to go to scotland or something like that you know <laughs> it would be in his best interest to do that because for him to claim to be such a businessman I don't know anybody, you know, other than that's within his fan base that will want to see yeah. going to you know, with him. So, you know. You know I, I heard that he's going to be out of the country around the 19th and the 20th. And I think the only country that would, that would accept him and, and, and hide him is Putin. So I'm thinking he's trying to get out of the country on Air Force One and he can tell them, take me anywhere. Let's go to the Soviet Union. You go to Russia, and I think they, were, they will protect him because I believe a lot of this stuff that he did was for was for Putin. Yeah, from, I, from day one, from day I, one. I totally agree. I definitely feel like he had a lot of self motivation, a lot of things that was for him. He was motivated by no matter what, even if it meant going against the country. You yeah. know, whatever it took to make sure he comes out on top. That's it. You know, if he has to use other countries that we've, you know, been in war with. And, you know, although things are good, it's still like, how are you going to take, you know what I'm saying, loyalties of another country over our country and you're the president. And we look to you and expect you so you know, have our back before anyone else. You know, that's sort of how I look at it. And it's really troublesome to kind of like explain what's going on to my children. You know, to have conversations among the community. It's very difficult, you know, to have so, um, Mainly, I feel like it's just imperative to put things into perspective because I don't want things to blow over. I feel like this is definitely a time to stand yeah. up and say a lot and, you know, kind of push for a lot of change, push for a lot of things to be different because now we have the proof to show how the system, how these people that are in public office in positions of power their mindset has been fueling their decisions within the public yeah. office they hold. Because they feel like they off-duty police officers and people that hold high positions in the government was their rioting, was their against 
you know, the election and the natural way that we do things. Go ahead. What about the guy with the zip ties? The zip ties. The guy had zip ties. I mean, he, it was like something out of a James Bond movie. They coming from the damn ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Coming from the ceiling, like they, like, like you want to see a Batman or something. I mean, it was absolutely crazy. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, is this the United States of America, the land of the free, the land of law and order? Because I didn't see any law and order. I seen. I seen white nationalists and I seen a white mob that was uh, stoked up by the president and his racist rhetoric and his continuous lies that he continues to feed his base about election fraud. I mean, he already told us what he was going to do. If he lost this election, we would never see him again. He, he was going to be a different person. And he's already trying to sow the doubt in people's mind that the election was stolen. When all the people he put in place to make sure that didn't happen, they said, Mr. President, it didn't happen. But he's going to keep lying, and those people are going to keep doing what they did. And what bothers me is the fact that as an activist in the community, I dealt firsthand with these neo-nationalists and these white nationalists and Proud Boys. All the people you've seen up there in Washington, D.C., as a matter yeah. of fact, some of them, some of them were actually there. Like yeah. Miss Audrey Sutherland. Hey, Audrey. Yes, Audrey was out there too in the Capitol trespassing. And I hope the FBI will be contacting her soon because she was breaking the laws just like those other thousands and thousands of Trump supporters that the president pretty much begged on Twitter to come out. Thank God for Twitter for finally sticking up for the American democracy and banning this man because he is inciting violence. He is, in, he is, he is, He's like the Antichrist almost in a way, they say, you know? He has no good bone in his body. No good bone. It's all about greed. And it's been that way from the beginning. But what really we need to talk about is how the Republican Party let this go unchecked. They let it go unchecked. They let him get away with murder. They let him get away with this, get away with that. The Mueller investigation, Russia, you name it. We have security breaches right now in this country national security threats happening right now with Russia and all other countries that the president hasn't said a word on it. We don't know what he thinks, but we know one thing. He, the Russians have something on him and he doesn't want to let us know what that is. Putin got something on him and I don't know what it is. And I hope once he's out of office, we'll be able to find out because he doesn't have the power of Bill Barr or the Justice Department anymore. He's going to be a private citizen. He stole all that money from his supporters who were so gullible to keep donating to him after he clearly lost. He's going to use that money because once he leaves office, like Nancy said on 60 Minutes, he can pardon himself from federal crimes. But when it comes to the state crimes, he cannot. And that's where most of his troubles lie in the Southern District of, the, of New York, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Well, that's going to be interesting to watch play out. I'm definitely going to be following along because... And can I say one thing, Candace? Yeah, go ahead. I hope they, I hope that, and Bill, you might concur with me. I hope they take Rudy Giuliani too. Take him. Take Rudy with him. Take Rudy on the... Oh, I want to see Rudy and his hair dye dripping. <laughs> I want to take Rudy to jail because he's a crook. Mm hmm Ask to unmute. Yo. You're muted, Bill. I think you're muted. <laughs> okay, how's that? Perfect. Uh, uh, well, Rudy Giuliani, you know he was complicit. When he got Very out, and, uh, he made statements and talking about, <laughs> let's, come, let's go to combat. Mm -hmm. And so was um, his kids. And then so was the, the ringleader, Trump. And now we're learning there's a possibility some uh, Congress individual individuals from Congress may have been uh, conspirators in this mm -hmm. by first leading um, tours to the Congress the day before the incident. Uh, as one Congressperson put it, to, to reconnaissance the building. And well, if you think about it, Bill, when they, when, that was a planned operation. I mean, they knew where to go. 
when to go, what time to go. And you actually see videos that are coming out every day of the police waving them in. Come on, come on, y'all. Come on in. Nancy, right. right over there to the left. Come on. But you had blue, you had blue lines matter involved. No, not blue lines matter, back to blue. They was represented there. And it made me think when I found out, when I heard that Back to Blue was involved, it made me think of Newport Ritchie. How these same people of the same mindset was welcomed by our elected officials in, uh, in Newport Ritchie. And surprisingly enough, or maybe perhaps not surprisingly enough, you have many of, people, of, many of these people comparing that, those, that riot with, back, with uh, Black Lives Matter movements or uh, marches. And there's no comparison, absolutely no comparison. Yeah, but it, but it, but it's it's a way of trying to to put a stain upon black people. That's all it is. And I think this entire movement, the rioting, all of this stuff, is based on anti-black sentiments. Totally based on anti-black sentiments. I believe the, the the group that went there to riot, they're part of the Trump mindset. They have a particular dislike and a, a hatefulness people of color. And matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, that's what Trump's total hey, movement Bill, started. Bill, <laughs> you're a student of history. When you just described that to me, I started thinking, didn't Adolf Hitler do the same thing where his followers thought that the Aryan race was the purest race on the planet? Absolutely did. You know, and, and that's how these Trump supporters, their mindset is, they're easily misguided just like some of the Germans were during World War II. And anything that he says, they believe. And a lot of them are very racist. And the sad thing is, Bill, you're right. A lot of law enforcement officers, a lot of former military people were involved in that. I mean, the guy with the zip ties, he was like a colonel in the army or the, the, the Marines or something. I mean, we even had, like I said, we had people in, in Newport Ritchie, protesters, you know, all these crazy folks, they were out there as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, and now you hear all the senators and all these congressmen, they were debating the impeachment articles and you keep hearing all the Republican GOP members say, well, we've seen worse in Democrat run cities with Black Lives Matter. They keep bringing up Black Lives Matter. If Black no, Lives Matter- Marlo, 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 they more, than, more than bringing up Black Lives Matter. Yeah. They're, because, they're saying Black Lives Matter, but it could be inter interchangeable with those black people. That's what it's all about. They're trying to equate actions of blacks with this riot. So they're just saying black lives matter, but they want to say those blacks, but using a different term, a more derogatory term. Well, yeah, it was kind of like, I don't know if you or Candace ever seen that one interview with Richard Nixon's, I mean, I don't know if it was Ehrlichman, one of the people in Richard Nixon's um, cabinet, and he actually said years after Nixon's impeachment, what Nixon's objective was in the black community. He said, you can't come out in 2020 and call somebody the N-word. You gotta do it differently. You got, you know, you gotta say it differently. You gotta treat them differently, economic slavery. And they do it in other ways, you know, and, and the, to us as black people, but they've been doing it forever. You know, they've been doing it forever, but I'm hoping with this new administration, I'm not saying that we are gonna see a, ain't, I, I don't have, intentions or hopes that Joe Biden for coming there with a magic wand because at the end of the day we got a lot Trump messed up a lot of stuff I mean he put us he put us back he took the time pendulum and spin it right back to 1940 and 1960 Governor George Wallace time you know what I mean so we got a lot of work to do but us as the black community I feel like you know this is our time we're you know, seeing you know, historic changes in yeah. our nation and in Congress. You know, with this young upcoming leadership in the House, Ayanna Presley and Cory Bush, and, and even with uh, the brother that just got elected in Georgia. I mean, I am 30 years old. It is 2020, and Georgia has never had a Black senator? Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> baffling. You know, in a perverse way, in a perverse manner, it's good that Trump, in a perverse manner, good that Trump acted the way he did, said the things that he did. Because it shows America 
there's still no black equality in our country. So in that perverse way, it was beneficial to us. And we know there's a large percentage of people in this country that still have a dislike for people of color. Absolutely. Now, we, but we, but we in the communities, we in the community, we got to pick up the gauntlet. We got to go forward because we can't just leave it up to Joe Biden and the Congress. We no. got to do what we can in our neighborhood. Yeah. And that's why we're talking about now uh, pushing again for a citizen complaint review board. Mm -hmm. Desperately needed in Pasco. You know, I, I met too many people saying, a uh, uh, police officer or officers did this to me, yet I'm afraid to go to them. I'm afraid to sit in front of my accuser to let him make a determination were they wrong or not. And that, that, that it, it, meant, it reminds me of what I mentioned tomorrow that I read a complaint where a lieutenant and a group of other officers was accused of wrongdoing. And the lieutenant is the one who did the investigation and found we did nothing wrong. That's absurd. That's absurd. And so essentially that is to say this, we have to, in our community, we have to make a better effort to get together and make a, make a change. Because these same yep, yep. type of people that was in Washington, DC, the very same people, the same mindset that was in Washington, DC, is sitting in elective offices in Vasco County. Yep. And we need we need to make an effort to do something about it. Absolutely. Like this De Debbie man who's done everything she can do. Not only welcome them, but join them. Join anything to do with them and they didn't ever acknowledge us as Black Lives Matter besides when we forced them to come to the table. When we brought when we turned the when we turned the eyes of Tampa Bay onto the little spectacle of Newport Ritchie and we and we dashed the spotlight on the on the racism that's running rampant in the government, the police departments. I just want to report Officer Valente has been fired from the Newport Ritchie Police Department. That's Officer crazy. Corey Oliver has been fired. Everybody in that department, according to the lieutenants, Melliker and Lawrence, their body cams are working and operational. Oh, now we, right? we, yeah, yeah, they got the body cams that they spent all that money on. A ridiculous amount of money. You're not even going to go there. And, they, but, and, they, and they're wearing them. They are wearing them. And according to them, they work. But we got to still follow up on that. We got to still make sure we do our due diligence and not just take their word for it. We got to make sure that they work and that they're recording at all time. And we have to make sure that the chief, whoever he or she may be, we have to make sure that we are holding them accountable because we want to make sure that these officers can't just do what they want with these body cams. They need to be on the whole time you're on your ship. No touching well, them or turning them off. You know? I think what we can do is randomly act for a copy of a video every now and then. Yeah, to make sure. But even more so, there are two other, three other police agencies that as far as I know are not wearing body cams. Dade City, Port Ritchie, and Zephyr Hills. Now we need to push for those three to get body cams. Yeah, now, it should be universal. Right, now I don't know what the, the other group, uh, part of Black Lives Matter, is doing right now. But I like you and I to reach out to them, to say to them, now that Newport Ridge has body cams, let's choose another agency or the three agents simultaneously to force them to get body cams as well, mm -hmm. and force each of the each of the five to agree to have um, a citizen review board. Absolutely. Uh, so, Bill, can I ask you a question? Of course. What do you, do you feel that everything that's happened, the impeachment, the riot, how do you feel all of that is going to affect this community, Pasco County? 
I think it's gonna it's gonna cause a lot of anger because what's gonna happen? A lot of these people are gonna be prosecuted. That's my belief, and it's gonna cause a lot of people to, to be angry. Back to blue is gonna try and come down harder. Uh, the Proud Boys are gonna get nastier. And we as a people got to be ready for it because that's what I think is going to happen. And the authorities, the chief. Now, if they accepted these people in Washington, D.C., the authorities, members of Congress, some of the police, uh, police agencies, some of the chiefs of police <laughs> accepted these people, it's no more than the same thing here in Pasco and in, in, in Newport Ritchie. They accept, no, as a matter of fact, it already shows. They accept these people. Yeah. Um, I don't remember why, when these people were running around talking about doing, uh, hold, holding marches, running around with weapons on them. Yeah. And it was done <laughs> nothing has still, speaking of that, Bill, nothing still has been done about that. We have had two to three different instances over the past, over 2019, where armed men have pulled out guns, brandished guns, drove through our protests, flashing their weapons. Not not one single charge has been followed up on by Bernie McCabe's office. And How, neither, nor the police agencies. Nor the police agencies. They always tell us, well, we need the videos. We need this. We need that. But when y'all want the videos, y'all go and get them. When y'all go and get them. Y'all subpoena they, them. They're professionals. They know how to conduct an investigation. Exactly. But, but they it's, want happening, to it's happening to people of color. You know, yeah, but they want to make it seem like the people of color don't know what they're doing. Oh, well, we couldn't do anything because you guys didn't give us the videos. You've seen the videos the day the incident took place, and you said, this is what you need. You got it, and when you got the video, you said it wasn't good enough. It wasn't clear enough. Spare me the BS. That man or that person or whatever needs to be arrested. They need to have their gun lights revoked. You can't just go up into a library and have a gun holding it halfway out of your pocket. It's That's just right. crazy. But as you can see, look what happened in Washington, D.C. This angry white militia was able to storm, breach, and take over the most, what we thought was secure place in the world. But now we know with investigation and as the story unfolds that it wasn't some haphazard just fluke. It was actually well thought out, well planned, well executed by people even within the government. I've seen video of a Republican congressman opening the door for some of these Proud Boys, letting them in. They had clear, conscious uh, motives. They wanted Mike Pence. They wanted Nancy Pelosi. They wanted to stop the certification of that vote. And that was what they were going to do, either stop it or hinder it. And Donald Trump is complicit in every way. Rudy Giuliani, who also spoke on that day, and incited, and actually, what did he say? We should have a trial by combat? Mm -hmm. Like, Rudy, if anybody should have a trial by combat, it's you. You know, because he ain't nothing but a coward. You know, you sold your soul to the devil for a couple of greenbacks. Just like Donald Trump. They're all cowards. They're all selling their souls for money. And they only care about greed. But see, that's what's going to be down, Donald's downfall. Because all of those investors and banks, they're pulling away. Mm -hmm. They don't want nothing to do with them no more because it's coming crashing down. Yep. You know, he actually, I mean, if Barack Obama did that, if Barack <laughs> Obama told a whole bunch of Black Lives Matter folks to go to the Capitol and storm it, we would never hear the end of it, okay? They would have right. called out, they would have dropped Hiro, they would have dropped a bigger bomb than they dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. They would have flattened Washington, D.C. if Black people came out like them Trump supporters came out. Mm -hmm. They allowed these people to go in there, take it over, uh, vandalize it, just destroy it. And they did some horribly disgusting stuff in there. These Trump supporters. The National and they got to say, well, it was a couple of black people there. <laughs> Give me a break. The Give National, me a break. If it had been black people, the National Guard would have been there before we got to Washington. Hey, they would have stopped, stopped us 100 miles from Washington, D.C. <laughs> There's no way they wouldn't let people of color go nowhere near the Capitol. So let what? me ask you this, Marlo. Let me yes. ask you this. Can you touch base with the folks that you're involved with over there, Black Lives Matter and some of the other organizations so that we can uh, maybe have a Zoom meeting so that we can get back to working? 
what I'll do is I'll send and refer that one to Candace because Candace might know a couple of people that can set up the Zoom. But yeah, I'll talk to anybody that I know. Me and Candace can probably work on that together, and we'll, you know, maybe. Okay, well, what, can you guys set up a Zoom meeting? And you, you, you and Candace set up a Zoom meeting, and we'll try and get these people on a Zoom meeting. Is that doable, Candy? Um, I mean, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can do that, Marlo. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, All right. Let, let's come. You guys come up with a date, and I hopefully I'll be oh. around. I'm sure I'll be. <laughs> I'll be around. You're gonna be around, Bill. You got lots to do, Bill. Lots yeah, to do. Yeah, I'm saying my I'm saying my prayers and I'm asking everybody to say prayers for me, man. So one of yes. those things. So so we're gonna, we're gonna keep you in our prayers always, brother Bill. It's the fight still gotta continue and we need your guidance and we need your vigor and energy, okay? Because who's gonna be out there with us on the front lines if it ain't brother Bill? Uh, uh Candace, uh Marlo and I talked to uh Kate uh Kate McCur McCurry today. Yeah, and she's going to do an article on our push to get a uh, civilian review board. Okay, awesome. She said she's going to give us good, positive uh, article. Okay, great. So, so and I, would like, and I, I would like to report one last thing. I know we've been on here for a while, and I thank everybody and Candace for helping us get this set up tonight to talk to the people, talk to our community because we really want to talk to y'all and let y'all know. What, what's going on in the community, what's going on in the nation and everything. But I'm here to report that I got an email from my dream team of lawyers at the ACLU. And I just want to say that I have found out that our noise ordinance violations that myself and other members of the community and activists, Black Lives Matter and other uh, leaders in the community, our noise ordinances have all been dropped. So yeah. that is absolutely some of the most amazing news I've heard today in a long time. Yeah. Um, and it, it, and it's, it's truly amazing because just a couple of days ago, I received an email saying that Mr. Driscoll, the city attorney, wanted us to plea. He was going to drop it to 70. <laughs> said, no, Mr. Driscoll, no pleading here because we are not guilty, sir. And you know what? Justice did prevail in that case. So right. I and we thank God and thank all of our supporters who have been rocking with us rocking with me, helping to support me through all of this craziness with the city, okay? And we've had some very good attorneys step forward to help us. Very good attorneys. We're they very thankful to them. And they stayed the course. So again, I'm going to reiterate, uh, I'm going to reiterate if I can. Uh, can you hear me, Marlo? Yes, I can hear you, Bill. Okay, if you and Candace just come up with a day, maybe two or three weeks from now, and we we'll, and hold a Zoom meeting, and we'll see who we can get on that Zoom meeting, so we can get moving in in Pasco. I think this is an opportune time for us to do that. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, sounds good. Yes, that does. As usual, I appreciate you all coming to you know add some clarity and provide some information on you know what's going on in the community what actions you all are taking to ensure that we all you know are able to live equally <laughs> and have equality when we have to uh, interact with the justice department when we have to interact with community leaders that we are receiving the same uh, rights and privileges that everyone else. And these are the people that's on the front line fighting for those things, either through protesting or, you know, uh, communing, gathering people in the community to make changes that will benefit everyone. So we are grateful for you. I'm grateful for you as always. Marlo, thank you for joining. Pasco Young Revolutionaries, uh, find them on Facebook, Pasco Young Revolutionaries, and Katsy is Facebook as well. Check them out. I'll put all of the information in the description box, and you all stay tuned for any upcoming updates. And let me thank you, Candice. I don't want to be remiss, so thank you for all that you do, and thank you do a lot. You. Thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate it. I appreciate thank it. Thank you very much together and do our part so thank you together united we can never be divided all right peace peace